Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed that introduction. As you can see from it, I, along with four other artists, are going to be doing a collaboration video series where we all are going to do a different type of pour. I, myself, I'm going to be doing a Dutch pour. And as you saw in the intro, we've got four other artists. Their names is our, uh, Yen with Yen C Art. We have Dave with Dave's Acrylic Pouring Art. We have Lori with Pizzazz Studios. And we have Sarah with Colorful Creations by Sarah. That video, again, is going to be coming out on June 20th. And what we're going to do, I think we're going to release the, all the videos at the same time at noon. But I'll, we'll have more information. But if you haven't already subscribed to everybody's channels, go check them out. Subscribe to their channel. Hit the notification bell. That'll help everyone gain some followers. Also, you get to see some other people do different pieces. So, All right. So this portion of the video is just a... Uh, a advertisement of our collaboration. So I'm gonna cut on over to the actual day's video. So I will see you in just a few moments. Uh, today I'm going to do a uh, Dutch pour and I'm going to do a traditional Dutch pour where I lay out my colors and then I lay the base coat down and blow it a little bit over the colors and then fan them out. What I normally do is I just put down the colors and then blow them out. So I'm going back to a traditional way of doing a Dutch pour. So uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six colors that's going down on the canvas. And then I'm all, and it's also going to be a split canvas too. It's going to be white at the top and it's going to be a blue at the bottom. So let's get started. I'll take you down to the canvas and then we'll talk about everything else. All right. I'll be right back. So, today's going to be a very interesting day because I'm going to do this piece and then I'm also going to be resining probably about three or four pieces today. So I'm trying to move everything. I've got one studio room and then a drying room. So I really only have one place to pour stuff and do resin. So <clears throat> it might be a big mistake because I might be getting too much movement around in the studio while the resin's drying. So I don't know, we'll see about that. But in any case, what I've done is I've shifted everything over to the left side of the table. So I'm, I'm trying to give myself enough room to work. So anyways, let's talk about today's painting. So today, I'm like I said, I'm doing a 12 by 24 canvas and it's gonna be a split canvas. And I'm gonna do top portion white and the bottom portion is gonna be Amsterdam's Brilliant Blue. Um, and then the colors today are going to be Pebeo Iridescent Blue Green. This turquoise green I mixed up and boy did I use a lot of colors. So this consists of Liquitex Bright Aqua Green, Liquitex Thalo Green, some Studio uh, Iridescent Blue Green, and iridescent green yellow. So I mixed all three of those together and came up with this really cool turquoise green, which kind of look at it, it almost looks like this regular bright, uh, bright aqua green. Um, so, but it's gonna have some shimmer because I used two iridescents in it. So that's gonna be cool. Get those out of the way. Um, then I mixed up another color. So this is a mixture of Artist Loft Cobalt Blue and deco art metallic amethyst so again two more colors that's going to end up with some good shine shimmer to it um you know you probably say well why couldn't you just use cobalt blue and leave it alone but i wanted to give it a little bit a little more depth with that amethyst so that's that and then we're going to use a little bit of amsterdam's primary magenta deco arts 24 karat gold and Pebeo Iridescent Orange Yellow. Now the orange yellow is gonna be tricky to use because I don't want this piece to get muddy. And it's been my experience, every time I use an orange, things tend to get a little muddy. So I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flood the canvases and uh, get the sides touched up and then we'll start to pour. Also, what I did is I went ahead and painted the starting point and the ending point of where I want my blue, and I painted the sides. I did a coat of the color with already mixed. It's the Floetrol and water. So I just did a coat with a little paintbrush, 
and I used the hair dryer to kind of dry the paint quicker so I can get started and then I put another coat on it so this is going to be a, a nice little color blue um, my trick is going to be to keep these colors from blending over into the line I really want to keep this much white negative space so um, I think what I'm going to do is make a line with the white. If I can get this top off. There we go. Get that around the edge there. It's good with that. Actually, I've got my... Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White here too as well. So we'll use this. Make sure I get enough on there. And what I can do is you blow that over the sides and then I can touch up the edges. And then I've got the blue here. Let's bring this right up there. No, don't spread. That's what I don't want it to do. Woo. Leave enough there. All right, let's blow this out. Let's torch this for air bubbles. So I did shake up the paint. So the key to doing something like this, as always, is you want to make sure you have enough paint on the canvas, but you also don't want to put too much paint on the canvas. So, and I don't know that I'm going to use a lot of each color either. So let's put this metallic color blue. For instance, this red, actually, I think I'm going to put the gold out first. Oops. It's 24 karat gold. A little goes a long way. This primary magenta. I don't think I'm going to use a lot. Again, because I don't want things to get muddy. So this orange. There. Again, I think I'm going to put just a little bit down here again. This cobalt blue or mixture of cobalt blue. All right. And so now here's what is different than what I've been doing in all my other videos that you guys have seen is. And most uh, traditional Dutch pours is now you put some more of the color, base color here, and you blow it over your colors. So I am going to do that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do opposite. So I'm going to put a little of 
the blue base through here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the white down here. And then the thing you want to do also is you want this colors to be able to move with the blow dryer. So I think, and I want this to kind of blow up this way and then blow out this way. So I think what I'm going to do is put a little here, put a little here. And we're going to put a little bit more paint here. I haven't done a pour like this with pouring the color over the poured colors, pouring the base over the poured colors in a very, very long time. I don't always like that look that it gives, so fingers crossed, we'll see. All right, so now I'm gonna lightly blow the white over the colors, or excuse me, blow the blue back over the color here. Colors moved. I'm getting a lot of cells. This is very nice. All right, let's mess with a little bit of the composition here. So I'm gonna... This gold is really nice. It's coming down. Oh man, this is really cool. Uh, you're starting to see the cells from the white kind of bring back up here, which is nice. Just a little bit up here. I love this. Guys, this really came out cool. I don't want to blow too much. The metallic in this and all the other shimmery colors from the iridescence really are popping. You got some, I mean, this gold really carries through here and it moves up here. And let's fix this. Got nice soft petal edges. Um, the white carried in down here so it's not too uh, overwhelming. Got the negative space here, got the negative space here. Guys, this is great. And you know what? The happiest thing about this is I don't have to do a lot of touching up to it. I think I'm gonna leave this just the way it is and do a little torching and leave it at that. So I'm gonna torch and just see if there's any more of the color that's gonna come through. So you need to be careful with your torch. When you torch for air bubbles, that's one thing. But if you hold the torch too close, it does start to create little microscopic tiny cells, bubbles, if you will. And then, but sometimes when you torch, there is some color underneath here, kind of quote unquote hiding. So you can get that revealed. I 
All right. Let's put the air bubbles here. Make sure there's nothing else hiding. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if I like this white here. Ah. Let me see what happens if I just blow this section down just a little. Okay. I don't want to mess with it too much. It's going to start getting muddy. Okay. Broke up the white a little bit, that's better. Let's torch again, because I just made those air bubbles, blowing it around. All right, I am gonna take you down and show you what we got. Be right back. Okay, here is what we got here. Let me take you in, show you down from this corner. I love how there's just a hint of the metal, all the colors kind of right here. And then as you move up this way, then you really start to see all the colors again. All these cells. What I did is I blew with my mouth and I got some of this white that's down here kind of blown out so it doesn't look like it was all concentrated in one area. Look at this though, wow. Um, here, I'm gonna turn off the studio lights and see what kind of shimmer you can see because man, is there a lot here. Be right back. All right, I haven't tried this before. I turned off the studio lights and I turned off my overhead can light. So um, let's see if we can see that. Uh, can't, that's the ring light there. Um, yeah, there's just, you can't see, unfortunately. Let's see. Alexa, studio on. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you didn't need to hear that. Um, let's see. There we go. You can see the, the shine there from the gold. And the orange, it didn't get too muddy. I love this. Absolutely love. You got the negative white space up top. The matchy negative white space at the, or blue space at the bottom. That's what we got. Let me get this into the full strange. Now, don't forget, we're going to need to scrape our edges. So I'll do that off camera. But what we want to do is just bring our popsicle stick over here and scrape all the edges all the way around the camera. Because what we don't want to happen is we don't want all this amazing color that's creeping over the side, which is awesome. We don't want it to keep pulling the paint off the canvas. So. Okay, guys, once this dries, I'll get this up on the wall and we will show you the dried result. Okay, guys, here's the dried result. Excuse the nails on the wall. I had a, um, I had nine canvases up there, 10 by 10, that I finished. So that's what I left up in the wall. <laughs> but as you can see, this piece is dry and it looks absolutely stunning. I'll bring you in for a close-up. Look at that composition. I just didn't even play with this time. I left it alone. I just liked the way it came out. Um, the gold is really shining. Let's see if I can get it in a, an angle here so you can see that. And it's kind of hard to see. Um, just stunning. Even the color came down here, which was awesome. As always, my pieces are available for purchase. If you're interested, send me an email at Brian's Upper Valley Artistry at gmail.com. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. If you already subscribed to my channel, thank you and welcome and, and thank you for coming back. Any new subscribers, welcome to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That will uh, let you know when I post any new content. Okay, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.